All right, so we're officially here. We're live with Prima. I'm Sharon Locken, and I am going to be your teacher for the next hour. Hopefully we won't run over. I have so many tips and techniques to share with you though. I've prepped a lot um, and you know I get talking fast so I may squeeze it in. You never know. So this class we're going to feature Christine Adolph and she is a boutique designer for Prima. She came out, let me just sneak one out but the glare is going to be bad, I'm warning you. She came out with these adhesive rub-ons. They're 6 by 12 and they're amazing and I have windows on the bank wall across from me so see that sunny glare it's not raining out today for once okay so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera down we're gonna get going and it's gonna go black for one second don't I just figure I don't want to make you look like you're on a roller coaster so I'm gonna just close the camera and then give me two seconds to flip this around and how easy was that you won't get seasick this way okay let me get my focus going. I'm on autofocus right now, but sometimes it just wants to mess up. Can you guys see this okay? We want to make sure it's going to be good quality for you and everything's good. Delena, give me the thumbs up if, if everything's looking okay and if you can hear me okay. I might actually switch. Hello. Is that better? I switched to the other um mic and that might be a little bit better so I don't have to yell okay okay Miranda can't see really oh no all right you guys hang on Hang on one second. Okay, Delena says my loud. Okay, it's too white. I'll try it now. I am adjusting it just a little bit for you guys. I do have a lot of brightness in the room today. Oh my gosh, Miranda. I'm, you're in big trouble, girl. She said she couldn't see me and I'm fooling around with the camera. Okay. Is the volume okay? We normally get this going in the beginning, make sure we're all running, and um, sometimes it is a bit blurry. I wanna zoom down a bit after I introduce the, the rub-ons because they're so large. There's a glare because they're in plastic, so hopefully that will disappear, okay? Um, so I'm gonna be teaching Christine Adolph's rub-ons, and there is a glare because they're in plastic. I apologize for that. I have some out of the plastic, but they also have plastic on top, so <laughs> there's no way to get around the little bit of glare. But these are really, really cool rub-ons that, um, can you see them? So there are many different designs. There are words and hearts and patterns. I put these flowers here just to pretty it up and give the camera something to keep its focus on so it doesn't mess up on me, keep that white balance gone. Um, so there are backgrounds, oh, come on camera. I may not be able to go through these because I, I know um, camera wise, it does not like this. All right, one second, Delena. She wants me to um, switch the audio back. So let me just go ahead. All right, is that working for you guys? And the glare, I'm so sorry about that. So let me go ahead and just move the rub-ons. I'm gonna go ahead and put a project in there and I think the camera will be a little bit better now. Let me know if it isn't. Okay. Boy, I had all my settings like perfect and I don't know what happened. When I hit record, they all kind of went bonkers. <laughs> okay, we're going to get going, though. I've wasted like seven minutes. Okay, great. We're ready to roll. So we're going to use the Christine Adolph rub-ons, and we're going to pair them with Prima's foils. 
So Prima came out with these beautiful foils. These are just two of them. This is Bora Bora and Something Berry. And on the sides, you can see the colors inside the tube. And they're reactive with the adhesive. So that's really cool. We have six different tubes. So we'll be experimenting with um, a couple of these. There's Shine On, Holographic, Intergalactic, and I think Golden Girl, which is one of my favorites because it has uh, three different shades of gold which I love. So we'll be working with those. Okay, I think we're ready to roll. So the first thing I wanted to show you was this watercolor panel. Now I have put these foils on so many different things. It doesn't matter what craft you like to do, it works for this. So this one was a tag and you can see the foil was adhesive rub on was put on and then green foil was put on top of it and um, I saved the negatives, which you can see down here, that's a little tip. Save your negatives and just tuck it in here and there. It adds a cute little accent and it's something you normally would have just thrown away. But I want to do a panel today. I have a couple samples I just want to show you first of the different styles you can get with these. Okay, come on, focus. This one's been traveling all over. It went to CHA. It, I used um, Decadent Pies Confections to paint it, and then I put silver, the word love in silver on there, and accented it then with some of Finnevere's hearts. So there are sheets of words with this pretty uh, script font, and there's some brush words as well. Here's another one, and this one's been traveling and has, it's a bit banged up, I think. Um, but I put some of those little dandelions. I think that's what they are. I love them. And the word hope, and I, I would actually made this for a friend with the little message. So it has the dove dropping down little teardrops of hope, and it's just really fun. They create a resist when you use them and you add watercolor on top. So that's another little fun technique. So why don't we get going with it? So I have my watercolor panel. And Delena, tell me if this camera screws up because I am trying to keep something um, there so it focuses. So I've already cut pre-cut out a bird and we're going to um, grab our rub-on tool. It comes with a popsicle, but I'm gonna use our distress tool. And it is yellow. And that's just so you can see it. So we're going to pull it apart as a backing paper. You just peel that off. And then be careful where you put your fingers. Um, you do not want your fingers on the rub-on. So I'm actually going to wrap this around the side because my rub-on is too long. Um, and I think that'll work. If it doesn't, you guys will be the first to know. Come on, camera. For real? Let me just shut the autofocus off. Once it is focused there, let's just keep it right there for a bit. So when you're rubbing this on, the color actually does change to a darker yellow. Can you see that this part is darker than this? So you'll be able to see as it's going. Um, so I'm using the distress tool. It has a rub on little tip on the bottom or top, whichever way you flip it. This tool is so cool. It's very, very versatile. It distresses especially. That's what I really use it for all the time is the distressing. But it has a bunch of other things like bone folder, um, the rub-on tool. It. I don't know if I can get this one open. I have One of mine got jammed. It might be this one. It has rasp wires in there, which is really cool. And it's super comfy to hold. That's the thing I like. It has a nice big handle and your arm doesn't get sore when you're distressing and you know tearing up those papers. So what I'm going to do on this one is rub it to the very end and then I'm going to flip bend that paper and see if I can pull this off. I might do this with my fingers. If I screw this up it's okay. That just shows you don't try this at home. <laughs> and that's the cool thing about these classes, right? 
hey, it worked, look, popped off. That's what's so cool about these classes on Live with Prima. We do test everything ahead, but sometimes you just have something that goes, and it's always when you're on live camera. Isn't that the truth? Okay, so now we're going to pull it up, and if there's an area you missed, you're going to see it right away because it's going to cling to the transparency kind of like gum. So there we go. We have the um, transparency on, and well, it's not a transparency. It's the adhesive. And you know what I need? I need your help. I am going to work with purple flowers this time. Let me pull these out for you. And this number is um, 581923. And, um, but you can pull out any flowers you want. So the other one I use looked like this. And that's what's so cool about these products is you can personalize them. So obviously I don't have that flower. I'm going to switch it to purple. But I need to put my foil on first. So do you think I should go with silver? I'm thinking silver might look the best with the purple. Or gold. What do you guys like? I have this really pretty gold. Do you think that would work well together? I'm taking um, votes right now, you guys. What do you think? <laughs> okay, we're doing gold. Someone said yes, and I saw yes, so I'm going with it. Um, so this is one of the sheets, and they're also 6 by 12 and they roll up so you can store them. And this one isn't a brand new one, because you know what? I use them all the time, so if we have a little area that didn't work, it's my fault. So we're going to put it color side up. See there's a silvery side, but you can tell the foil side it's very shiny. So a couple of us have learned not to put the color side down. It will not work. It, it just sticks and will not come back up. So I'm pressing it out with my hand, but you can totally go in and burnish this now. And when you do that, the foil is going to start popping up. And I don't worry about it being perfect, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, let me roll this, though, so I can get the side done. So while I'm pressing this, let me tell you what's going on, okay? So today is National Scrapbook Day. It's really International Scrapbook Day for us. And um, we have a blog post. We, we have multiple blog posts going up, but if you scroll down on the Prima blog, you'll see a National Scrapbook Day post um, that says Prima, May 7th. And there's a schedule in there. And it has everything going on for the day. We have Live with Prima classes now through um, 9 o'clock, well, the last one starts at 9 o'clock Eastern time. We have, uh, Finnevar has a huge blog post from her design team on her website. You can find all this information and most of the links are on the Prima blog. But our hostesses are trying to get that information everywhere. I know the schedule is going up on Pinterest soon. It might be on Twitter soon. It was on Facebook a couple days ago. We're going to repost that. So um, next, though, after, well, during this class, we will be having, I think it's a Twitter party or a Pinners party. Which one? I, I got messed up because we did one last um, time. Let me just check my dope. We have a Twitter party right now, and we had a Pinterest party during um, Delena's. And you can still join those. So if you go to follow Prima on our social media and you'll see the giveaway pictures. We're going to be doing those all throughout the day and you have until Monday. So um, let me go ahead and get this up. If you have more questions, I'm hoping Delena can link you in. Now if there's a spot I missed or I didn't rub well, it's okay. I can go back and fix it. So there you have the gold all the way over on the side which I really love. And there's my negative. Whoops. I could totally save this. How cute would that be on something? Like cut it out and use it. 
But what I was going to say was, let's say I just missed an area, and I may have. You can go back. I did. See, it pulled off a little bit more right there. You can go back with a little bit of the gold in the corner and just press down. Make sure you've got everything. That's how this is fail-proof. And I think that's why I love it so much. Because there are times I didn't press down in certain areas. And it lets you go back and fix it. And you know what? Christine told me a really good, cool, a really cool tip. She presses down just in certain areas sometimes and then goes back with a different color and catches the rest. And she gets a two-toned effect. I am not that smart to think of that. She is just brilliant. Okay. <laughs> so if you screw up, make it multicolored. It's going to be so cool. We got our foil on. And I'm going to get rolling now because i got a lot to do and I've been talking. And um, I want to get a water brush. And I need to get, I keep my water brushes in a um, container so I can just grab them. But sometimes I don't refill them. So these are some of the newer ones. They're a little bit um, thicker. So they have a small, medium, and large tip. And I just get it wet. I want to get a little bit of paper towel. And we're going to do oil pastels over this. So I'm just going to have to pick some colors that I think would work well with the lavender. So what I'm doing is pulling out a bit of the purple. But I, I'm, I'm thinking I want a little bit of green in there. I'm not really sure. Maybe gray? No, not with the gold. Okay, so here's my tip. If you don't know what colors you want or what you're going to get, flip your um, watercolor panel over and start playing on the back. And once you figure out what colors you like, then go ahead and move to the front. I'm thinking I like that combo. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just start picking up some of the color. And this um, adhesive rub-on is going to act with the foil on top, of course, is going to act like a resist, which is really cool. So you can go ahead and paint over it. Anywhere where the adhesive and foil are not, the color is going to go in there. So like the words, you can get color in there because they were not part of the design. How cool is that? Okay, and with the oil pastels, I'm going to be kind of fast because the technique's more on the foil, but I kind of pre-wet the watercolor panel just so my colors will float better. I know that's not really a technical term here, but I want a watercolory look so they spread out better when you um, pre-wet the paper, and they'll blend way better that way. Okay, I'm going for a really splotchy look. You guys could blend it in and do whatever you like. You know that. We're going for more of a... I really got water on there right now. So these watercolor panels came out, and I was, like, really excited because I use canvases all the time. And I thought, these are so cool. I've never seen anything like this on the market. But I am really going to abuse it and put tons of water. And my very first panel was totally soaked. It buckled where the glue was. And I was like, ah, oh, this is disappointing. But guess what? It totally flattened out. So you may get a little bit of buckling from the water, which happens with paper. And these, this is watercolor paper. But it... It flattens back out. It's really cool. I'm just carrying the color to the sides a little bit for you. I know. You would make yours look amazing. I'm just slopping color on here. So all of our shows are recorded. So if you um, are weren't able to make it to the live session, these are recorded and they'll be on Ustream and hopefully we can get them over onto YouTube um, today as well. Alright you guys, there we go. 
And you know what else I found with the oil pastels? You can flick color off of them by doing this. Okay, now it's probably not going to work. But you can. You can get it wet on here and then flick the color off and make some of those splatter marks. It's really cool. And I think I came upon that by accident too. Okay, so we have our um, piece colored. But oh, you know what I was going to do was carry that watercolor look, the oil pastel look, onto the flowers. So I need to open that box up real quick. And this is a really cool um, technique for just bringing a little bit of the watercolor look into the flowers. It kind of pulls the whole thing together. Um, and I normally do this, and I almost forgot to do that. Sorry about that. But if you have flowers and you may not like the exact color, you can totally make it coordinate better by pulling out like the oil pastels and putting a bit of color on there. I love how it watercolors it. I got a lot of green up there. What was I doing? I think I had it left on my brush. We're just going with it. I don't think it's going to ruin it. It's just, let's pull a little bit more green on the other side then. So, we are almost ready to roll. I think I'm going to add a touch of that lime on these petals and you if you get too much color you just squeeze some of that water and you can pull pull it up with a paper towel that's what I love about um, all of our watercolor products and these are oil pastels most oil pastels are not water soluble however ours are so how cool is that there we go. So I'm going to keep this one really simple. And I know it's still wet. It's okay. I'm going to try and get this glued down. Let, let me know if you guys have any questions, okay? So I put the Christine Adolph rub on and I added foil on top. I really should heat gun this a little bit. Um, but it would be okay. This, this, I'm using Fabri-Tac, it glues to everything. I think I'm using Fabri-Tac. Let's make sure it's going to come out. <laughs> I may have to grab my other bottle. It was working last night. You know, I use glue all the time, and I swear I just go through it like crazy. So what do you guys think of that watercolored look? Now, this is the exact same technique. All I did was pick different flowers and different colors from this one. And look at the difference. And this is the easiest way to make something cute. Look, can you imagine for Mother's Day? The panels are so inexpensive. This, I think, total would cost you less than $10 and you'd still have a lot left, especially of the rub-ons, to go ahead and um, make more with them. I'm having glue issues. Just ignore me for a second. So I finally found one that worked. They both worked last night during my trial. Isn't that typical though? We're just going to squeeze some of these flowers in. And I am going to make them a, pack them in pretty tight and then hold them so I get a, kind of a 3D look right here on the corner. And this glue I'm using is zip dry, so it takes a little bit longer than my Fabri-Tac. But what do you think? Just squeeze your flowers in. I used one little pack. I think that is Capistrano. Delena, am I right? Um, use whatever flowers you happen to have, and you can get these panels. This is the 4x6 panel. So it's really um, a fun size, and I just think you're your mom or your sister or yourself. You'd all love one of these for Mother's Day, right? I have some other Mother's Day gift ideas coming up on this show. I have a lot of um, samples. I hope, well, I think it's still going to pop, but basically, there you go. Um, let me put the autofocus on. I want to zoom in real quick and just kind of show you some of the details. So, 
that foil acted like a resist and it but it still lets the color in where the that script pattern was and it went over the side which is really fun to do and then just carry your watercolors oil pastels onto the flowers so it all kind of works together so seriously how long did that take you guys need to make some of these all right I'm gonna get my focus set and then shut it off auto okay so we've learned how to put it on paper we um, and that's what the watercolor panels are they're papers and I showed you a million other ideas on paper so I also want to show you um, another idea on paper let me just grab my set here any planner lovers in the building? So I'm going to back up just a little bit here. If you love planners, these adhesive rub-ons are perfect, especially the words and the little, the smaller ones. There are so many cute things you can do in your planner. So I have been working on some pages. I had some that announced, um, my daughter, she's having another baby, and she had her, so these pages kind of celebrate that. And this is our new Heaven Scent line, which is adorable. It's shipping really soon. Um, so on March 11th, she had an ultrasound, and I had her ultrasound picture here, but she wanted it back. Can you imagine that? I did took it, I took a picture of it with my phone, so I am going to print it out and put it back in here. However, I just think these adhesive rub-ons and the foils would be so fun in your in your planner. I mean, look how cute they are. So this is a month spread, but if you switch to the day, they would work. So I'm going to just do a couple and have fun. I have not filled in these weeks yet, um, but you know, planners are so hot right now, and I'm like, Prima has the perfect products for a planner. I'm just cutting this one in half. I think I'm going to put, I'm just looking. I think, let me know if I go off camera. I might like spread that foil across the page like that. And this is the perfect place to get some color in your planner and some fun. So I'm going to take, I think I might do pink. Now, if I do paint, she's going to think I'm thinking she's having another girl. She has two. But I think um, this is the hardest part. <laughs> Picking the color of foil you want. So I may just pick pink. Don't tell my daughter I did that. We'll pick this soft pink. Okay. You see these pretty colors? Look at this. And there's holographic. Oh, my gosh. You need to get the foils. Okay. So let's set our foil aside. We're going to just go ahead and take these. Are you guys having as much fun as me? I'm sitting here trying to figure out how I'm not going to get in trouble with my daughter if I put pink in on the baby announcement thing. She has two girls already, but I don't, I think a third girl would be amazing. I had three girls first. I loved it. For real. And then we got into a boy rut, so that's how our family is. Okay, so I got that one rubbed on, and let me go ahead and just pull it off. And if something didn't stick, it'll let you know, and you can go back and add some more. I'm going to put the foil right on top. Now, this is in our planner, so it's that's the cool magic about these adhesive rub-ons. You don't need a special machine or anything, wherever you can get a rub on, you can get your um, foil added. Okay, so this is a prime example of me not pressing hard enough and having to go back <laughs> with my finger and fixing it. But you can see how you can go back and fix it. See how it took a little bit off of there? This is what you do. So if you didn't rub apart, go back with your finger and it'll pick it up. And how cute is that? I now have a pink foiled accent on my planner page. I think it's adorable. You guys, if you're into planners, you have got to get some of these. Let's do this flower down here. 
Now it makes me want to sit and play in my planner all day. I think we can zoom in a little so that you can get more of, um, of the effect. So it doesn't look like the camera is so far away. And then get this um, focused and we'll rub that on there. And maybe this time I'll pay attention instead of trying to catch up on the chat while I'm rubbing everything on. Do you guys have any questions though on the Christine Adolph rub-ons? There are probably, I'm guessing, uh, 20 different varieties, 20 different designs. I am totally pulling that out of the air right now. I could be wrong. There are a ton. Let's just put it that way. All right, so here, this time I'm going to pay closer attention, okay? But I think it's good to show you what could happen and how you can fix it, too. All right, so we're going to go ahead and peel this up. Oh, baby, that looks so cool. I see one little portion on the top I may have missed, and that's the beauty of this. You just go in there and press the foil down. You can catch any little area that you may have missed. It's so sweet. Let me go ahead and just zoom in and show you that. Can you guys see that? How foiled and sparkly it is? How cool is that? Okay, so I was just going to say, get your planners out. They're so fun to um, play in and squeeze a couple of these little words in on your the days that, oh, and I didn't even pick the right day. She had her ultrasound on the 11th, so I think it was, yes, right? The 11th. I'm going to go over here and put joy here. And then when I actually do fill that out with what happened that day, we're going to have a fun little foiled accent in our planner. And you could totally, if you want to put a little planner kit together, these sheets are 6 by 12. But you could totally cut these down and keep a little piece in your um, planner so it's not so big. I think it'd be so fun. Okay. We're going to do this word, and then I have about seven other ways to show you how to use the foil. Are you guys, are you still sticking, sticking with me? I know I missed a spot right here because I set my foil down weirdly, but that's okay. Remember I told you you can go back and press at any point, and it will pick up where you missed it. Look at that. We've got joy, joy, joy going on. And it's sparkly and foiled. I'm trying to catch the light. You know, I had so much light before. There we go. And I couldn't get the camera off the light. So, um, anyway, planners work great with the foils. We're going to move along, though. I have so much more to show you guys. So, the next thing we're going to do. Are you ready? Transparencies. I, transparencies, so when I say transparencies, I mean making your own accent with a transparency or a piece of film. This is from a stamp set. They make the coolest accent. So yes, you can put your adhesive rub-ons on anything. So here's a tag I already made. Let's get the focus on there. This is a tag I already did and I made a butterfly adhesive rub-on on a transparency and then used it as an accent. Here's another one where I just used the gold butterfly and it, I mean seriously don't throw your plastic away. Use it for um, something really cool like this. So what I'm going to do is just cut out this butterfly right here. There's a stick. You get a popsicle stick in there and it's right where I want to cut. So. I'm just going to cut right through the packaging. I have so much to show you guys. I need to get hustling. Alright, so I have my butterfly 
And what I would do is just make sure you don't have your fingerprints on the transparency. So just kind of wipe it off with paper towel. You don't want grease on there because adhesive doesn't do well with a grease spot. So I have it on there. And my transparency is packaging, but it is, can you hear it? It's, it is pretty sturdy. So you don't use really flimsy packaging or you'll get a really flimsy accent <laughs> that will curl up on you. Um, I've done that. So just from trial and error, you can buy transparencies that are really inexpensive. But this is a great way to reuse packaging and not throw it in the trash. Do you know how many clear plastic things we get product in? Not just Prima, but in the general um, when we're buying stuff. Just save those sheets. I throw it in with my foiling bag. There we go. So I've transferred it from this transparency to that one. And now what I'm going to do is pick out, oh I got this pretty pink butterfly. I think I'm going well, we haven't done blue yet. I just want to see the blue. Okay, let's try and do the blue. I hope my piece is big enough. This is the blue in the Bora Bora set. It has beautiful royal blue, this turquoise blue, and green. It's so pretty. Makes you think you're on vacation. All right. So we have it on there, and while I'm peeling off, I can see if I missed a spot here and there, which I do. And then if you see any yellow at all, just go back in and press your foil back down, and it'll fill in those spots. I have a couple. I just didn't rub hard enough. Okay, so I have my accent ready and all I have to do is cut it out and I can use it on a design now and it's beautiful I, the camera almost makes it look royal blue but this is a beautiful um, turquoise how cool is that okay so transparencies are another way to use it here are two samples with it already on there and there I just popped them in and they make the cutest little accents. So that's tip number three. All right, so number four. This one I did not come up with myself. Um, can you guys see that okay? Christine had these in her, um, uh, at the CJ show, and I, she had tons of photos done with these on and I just thought they were so cute so I'm looking for one to put on here she really needs something that says I'm crabby so this is my oldest granddaughter when she was not quite two she's now six um, what should we do I think I'll just do a butterfly I think that fits because I can't find one that says I'm pouting and having a temper tantrum because Nana won't let me do what I want but, okay, so a little tip with this. If you're going to use photos, try to get them um, printed on thicker paper. The thicker the paper, the less um, damage you'll do to it when you're burnishing that on there. But how cute is that? That's one of our brush words. So, um, did I show you the brush words? I have so much to share with you guys. Where are they? I don't think I did. Well, I will find them when I get to my other samples. And um, let's just put it a little sideways. I know I just did a butterfly, but I want to show you how to do it on a photo. And I would not use a tool for this. I would, I prefer to use my finger because it's softer. I can feel how hard I'm, I'm pushing in there. And I'm just going to be very gentle with it. And again, if your photo is glossy or matte, it may just, um, you may just have to rub a little bit harder on one than the other. But I have not experienced that myself. This girl loves hot pink. If I do anything else except hot pink, she might have a fit. 
right? She was going to give me that pouty look again. So I'm going to take our hot pink foil, put it on there, and again just use my finger. I'm really not even using my nail. You saw it pop up like magic. There's a little portion. I don't think I got enough on, so I'm going to press it. But there you go. I know this is a really simple and fast tip, but how cute is that to put the foils on a photo? It, especially get one that has a little bit of um, background. And how cute are these? I just think it's a great way to accent it, okay? And um, so we're going to move on. That was number four. But also, because it's on photos, you know that's a slick surface, you can also put it on glass. And I'm not going to do the glass, but I want to show you a sample. So it's going to be a little bit noisy. So this was, uh, let me zoom out real quickly. This is a honey jar I got in Savannah. And I we use the honey up, of course. But look at that jar. I love the jar. I didn't want to throw it out. So clean it up good. Use soap to get rid of any fingerprints and grease. And these rub-ons go on here beautifully. And you can see the foil is on there. This has traveled to CHA and back. And it is holding up really, really well. It's on display. I keep it downstairs on a shelf. It's so pretty. And I just think, don't throw your glass jars away, girls. You can accent those and make a, a fun little vase or something out of them. Okay. We've used it on paper. We've used it on a planner, a transparency, on glass, on photo. You can also use it on wood. And I looked all over for another one of my Kurt Blanche wood plaques. And would you know, believe it, I have no more. What a sad day. So I can't really show you. I might try it on the back. So this is a an IOD Kurt Blanche um, wood plaque. And Delaney is going to ask me for the number and I'm not going to know it. Here we go. 583057. It comes like this. It's it's real wood. It's already finished for you. And I wanted just a simple um, accent to hang up on my wall. And that's where I think these are so cool because I was doing a display with rose gold. Um, but you, you know how fun this would be with hot pink or the turquoise blue? So I cut apart some of the wildflowers and just burnished them on here. I did use my finger because I the wood is it's wood. It's not perfectly flat like paper. So I burnished it on with my finger. I got much better results that way. And then added a cute little butterfly up in this corner. And I have a, a really, really nice accent for my home. Do you guys want me to try and show you how it works on wood? Yes? Maybe? I'm going to just cut off a little What do you guys think? Well, let me try it on the back. If it doesn't, if it doesn't work, we'll just the back's ugly. I'm just warning you. It's been to CHA. It's had Velcro on it. It um, let me see if I can get that. The focus doesn't want to work. Come on. Hello. Okay, really. Once it works, I'm just going to not move. Okay, don't move. So it's been to CHA. It's had Velcro. I put my name on it. But we're just going to hang, put that hanger down there. I'm taking a little sunflower. And we're going to peel off the back and just stick it on here. This wood is rough. So I just want you to know, um, you'll see when it's changing colors that that part got burnished on. And I would think wood takes a little bit more time because of the variance in the um, where you're trying to adhere the 
adhesive rub onto it. It's just not as flat and that's okay. That's what we love about some of these textured pieces we're working with. So just try and burnish as much on as you can. See how I did here. Hey, look at that. Only a little bit of problem right there. And you'll see that when you're pulling it up. All right, it's on like Donkey Kong. So what color have we not used? Let's do holographic. I cut this. This is holographic. It's <laughs> party time, right? I think this is Carrie's favorite. She's all about the wildest look she can get, I swear. Bling bling. Yeah. So this one, where is my little popsicle stick? Well, I'm going to, you're going to hear scratching. Sorry. I just want to make sure I'm getting some, some of it pressed down. I have one problem. It's really textured right here. So I think of all the surfaces, the wood would, took me the most time, but I also think it's one of the coolest because of the texture. The fact that you could even put these on here is amazing. Okay, I got one problem right here, and that's where the wood is split. And I don't know if you can see that, but there we go. We now have a holographic sunflower on the back of my wood plaque and it's sparkling and dazzling. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so that was just another idea for you on wood. So my next one is going to be another Mother's Day idea and I hope you love this. So this little pot I had here, I'm putting all my samples on the floor. I hope I can find them later and I don't step on them. All right, so we have this flower pot this is $1.35 at Hobby Lobby. And this would make the best Mother's Day gift. Hello. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I took this pattern right here. And I'm really sorry I'm not giving you numbers. It has a border pattern and I'm just cutting it to fit the lip on the um, pot. So the number on this one is 971298. But I think you pick the ones you like, right? So I already started with this and I cut part off. And as you can see, I got halfway around. So I would definitely measure it before you go and do it to make sure it's going to fit. I have fake flowers in there just to make it look pretty. So what I'm going to do is measure this lip and cut part of this off. I just don't want it hanging over too much and save that for something else. It's still going to hang over a bit, isn't it? Let me cut a little bit more. And the reason I don't want it hanging up is because I want that sticky to only go on here. I could press it down here if I wanted to. So um, it is a circle. And you, if you've done sewing, you know you can like snip in and it makes it so much easier to bend around a, a circled area. It fits better. I'm just going to do that with this pattern. And I could splice on the top too if I wanted, wherever there isn't a, a pattern. And this is going to help you. Not only is my design rounded, but it, it is that concave, I think is the right word for that. So we're trying to work with that. So let's go ahead and peel this off. I probably should have measured it before I did that. I'm just going to butt this up right here where I stopped and start getting it on here. Now look, I'm running up it's running up instead of bending down. So what I'm going to do is just snip it right there. My one last night worked perfectly. Can I just tell you that? It's just being on live. It's the live curse. 
hopefully I won't touch this. I'm going to go ahead and rub this one. <laughs> but be, be warned, when you are working with a rounded surface or it, it's concave, it's going down in size, you're going to have to work in segments so that um, it doesn't twist all the way up on you. Flower pots are so fun to put foils on. And you can do the little snips in there. Delana is a sewer. She probably knows the exact um, terminology for that. I cannot think of it right now. But it's like anything that you're trying to bend and fit in on a rounded surface. You snip in and it gives you a little bit more freedom. So let's go ahead and try and finish this. I wonder if I'm actually going to make it to the end. Hey, we're just going with this look, okay? So if it doesn't, it doesn't. I can go cut a little bit more of that pattern and fill in. But this pattern itself is um, distressed, so it has little pieces missing, and that's why I picked it. I thought it was perfect for a project like this where I could screw up. No one will know because it's actually supposed to look like that. Okay, so Delena, did we ever come up with that term when you splice something like that, like on fabric? Look, this peels up magically. And if there's any on the top, I'm just going to kind of bend that down. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? Well, you can't see much because it's just the adhesive. I'm going to take this rock and green lime green and you can see I've already used this. This is what I used for the bottle and it's what I used on the other edge. So I'm going to take it and we're going to go in here and it's okay if the foil crinkles. Did we say that yet? It's okay because you can go back and fix any area that might have been um, missed. So go take your foil. Seriously, I got a big crinkle there. Are you guys having fun yet? I want to go after this class and go buy a bunch of flower pots. Like this is the only one I had. And I want to do a bunch of these. Okay, we're going to go in here and get any place you see yellow. Just go back with the foil and press. And I see I didn't line it up perfectly. I got a tiny little gap right here. And I don't, oops, I'm off screen. I don't know that most people would even notice, but I do. So I am going to take part of that strip I cut off and just throw something in there. I don't think it needs to match up. I just need some foil on there. Okay, you guys, go foil pots. I was going to paint it first because I thought that would be really cute. But um, I decided to just try it with the terracotta. Oh, my gosh. I loved it with the green. Look at that. Okay, well, that's not perfect. I may go in and sand that just a bit so it lines up better and scrape off right there. It's really, it's, it's basically foolproof. If I can do this, you guys can do this. How cute is that? Go get a pot for your mama or your friend. Put a little, you know, flowers or a little, what am I trying, a plant. I could not think of that word. <laughs> in there. And, um... Look how fun that is. So, a warning. If you want to do something on this surface, you are on your own. It's rounded and it really goes narrow here. So I would pick something that is, um, let me just show you. Like a heart. It might work. I actually think that might work really well. I can see it buckling here just a little bit. So if you wanted to do a word or something on the side there is a grow a word that says grow I think or bloom how cute would that be all right I gotta move on because I have more projects to show you but um, you guys go try that and then let me know how it works out okay 
I know some of you have these, so I'm expecting to see these. Okay, now we have relics and artifacts. Oh my gosh. This one I just kind of pulled out of the air last night. I see um, Sandra's design team making all these gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. They solder and they foil, and I can't do that. But what I can do is mock it up. So I'm taking her heart. This is one of her little hearts. Um, this is 941574, but really you can take any that you want. And what I'm going to do is be brave and take this bigger heart. This one was easy because it had a little surface and I just cut out one of those little hearts. But on this one, I am going to find one of the background patterns. What do you think of that? Which, like, seriously, I think these would be beautiful. So... I don't want it perfectly squared. I know I'm cutting in. Normally I would like really measure this and not waste any of the rub on, but don't do as I do. So this piece is plenty big. And that this um, adhesive rub on is 971434. It's one of the backgrounds, which I love for mixed media for journals and stuff like that. This is going to be a little bit big. And what I would tell you is to maybe cut your um, rub on first. If you have too much extra when you're rubbing, it doesn't know and it's like gum. It sticks to each other. So what I'm going to do is trim this just a little bit. And don't worry, I'm going to use this other stuff. I don't throw any of my stuff away. I put it on something. Just trim that away so you don't have a bunch of stringy pieces after you rub it on. And I don't actually know that this is going to work. I'm hoping this works. I might splice it. Is that the word, Delena, is splice? <laughs> Being so technical here. I want to splice it because I know I'm going round right there. But I think the rest, I think I'm good. I put a little notch right there. Really, you could just have fun with this. This is a bigger one. This was just a little heart and it was so easy to put on. This one I'm getting way more technical than I probably should have. Yeah, because I, I cut and it's already pulling some of the adhesive. Let me go down where I didn't do that so much. If Sharon can actually get this separated. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But we're going to try it because I think this is such a cool way to add foil. You know, I really trimmed that heart too small. What was I thinking? Okay, measure yours care more carefully than I did. This is just an idea, so it may not turn out perfectly, but we can always improve. So I'm going to do this stuff and tell you, okay, here's what didn't work. I love this. I love it. I wish I cut left it bigger though because the, the heart's rounded. So I'm going to have to go back with those pieces I cut off. It adds the most... Oh, it's gorgeous. So I'm going to take the brass or copper foil and put on here. So you can definitely do high-tech foiling and soldering on your relics and artifacts but if in case you're like me and you don't know how I think this is just the cheap easiest way to kind of do a mock-up of that and still get a really cool pattern ah, I'm shocked it looks as good as it does okay come on camera Come on, is that not fun? So just think of what you could do if you actually took the time to measure correctly. <laughs> I have these little pieces. I'm going to go back and fill in the edges. But even like it is, it'd be so cool if you took it now and um, 
sprayed it or did oil pastels because that's what I did on this one I went back and um, colored it so let's go with I don't even know what color to use like I'm just picking an orange out and adding it in there so the white isn't so bold how fun is that okay I know some guy Delana laughs at me that I'm shocked sometimes that my stuff works out on camera but I really am shocked sometimes <laughs> I love it this could be my necklace I'm gonna I'm gonna finish playing with this later and make a necklace out of it okay you guys you have to do this pull out your relics and have some fun you create your own little magical piece that's foiled and it looks like you did some advanced technique and all you really did was an adhesive rub on okay okay I think I have one more um, this one is just technique based I don't actually have a project you can take um, come on camera you need to behave we're almost done you guys maybe five minutes so you can take the adhesive rub-ons and you do not need to use foil with them you can use anything with them so I'm going to show you really quickly just three ways to use it sorry about that micro beads glitter and um, makeup powder so I'm going to get my little catch-all here I do have a project finished it's one I'd already showed you guys but I was playing around when these first came out so what this is just watercolor paper that I colored I let it dry so the opposite of the resist effect color first let it dry then I used one of the script words and I used the chunky glass glitter now it's a script word and in hindsight I would have used the fine glitter to get because the boundaries on those words are very defined and I think the glitter was just a little too chunky but I still like it it's a bit rustic um, so what we're gonna do is take just a watercolor paper from our paper pad right here it's one of my favorites 847708 I play around with this all the time we're going to take one of the background rub-ons first I'm gonna prep my surface I found this little tip this is an Inca Dinka Do or Inca something do. Inca Dinka Do and it's an embossing powder prep bag. It's amazing. It helps me so much when I'm trying not to get my art ingredients all over my project. So it kind of like um, to me it's like baby powder, so it resists things sticking to it wherever you rub it does that even make sense it works well with embossing powder it's made for that so I thought if it works for that we're gonna try it with some other things alright so I'm gonna go really quickly through this so I have my pattern on and I really hope the focus isn't gonna mess up on me now I already did one with mica powder and I did it with this beautiful blue mica powder and I'm not gonna try and find these numbers Delena so bear with me just pick the mica powder you love that Finn makes and you can see it's very um, subtle and shimmery when when you don't want to go Shazam this is what you would use I just think it's so beautiful like that okay so I pulled out another mica powder I think this is black cherry and what I'm going to do is get, I keep one brush just for my mica powders. It's kind of fluffy, is, um, you don't, you don't need a lot, so you don't need to cover the whole thing. But you want to pounce it on the design so that you're not smearing that rub on. And once you've pounced it all over the design, just go and rub it over. It is going to stick to that paper a bit. Um, 
just so you know. You're not going to get a pure white background when you're using mica because of the fineness of it. Um, it does, some of it just sticks. I then go back with a paper towel and just clean off most of it. And then you have your black cherry mica rub on. How cool is that? So these rub-ons work with so many different things, not just foil. So that's the mica powder. The next one we're going to do, I'm going to try and do these as fast as I can because I know I'm going over all my time. I'm cutting just background pieces. And think of how cool this would be in your art journal or on a tag or a card. So these are just little scraps of background pieces from projects where I cut it off. And I'm going fast, you guys. So if these aren't perfect, you know why. You, yours would be perfect. I forgot. I forgot to do my... Oh, how could I forget? I forgot to do this. My little secret weapon. Um, okay, that's because I don't know which one I'm going to do yet. Let's do glitter. Okay, I missed that little spot right there, but don't tell anyone. Pretend it was perfect. So Finnevere has all these little glitters, and this is the fine glitter. The other one I had showed you was the chunky glitter. And I probably should get this in the camera correctly. So you get like six different rolls or um, tubes, and it works. This just works so beautifully with the glitter. Oh, it's amazing. And I know glitter gets everywhere. This is worth it. So my little tip for this though, is once you get your glitter on, get your glitter on, cracking myself up. Take a, a blank piece of paper and just press it in. I don't like my glitter going all over my scrap room. And um, this helps a bit with that. Tap it off. Okay, did I not tell you that little secret ingredient was amazing? I barely have any glitter on the outside. I have a tiny little bit right here. That's it. And look how fun that pattern is. So that's the fine glitter with the Christine Adolf rub on. Is that not cool? This is like a prom dress. You go in and you're going all out. You want to steal the show. That's when you would use the fine glitter with the adhesive rub ons. Let's hope I can get this back in the bottle. I couldn't last night because my bottle was so full. So I'm going to have to dump it. And I apologize. <laughs> All right. The last, this is my last one. Are you guys hanging in there okay? I have this love-hate relationship with microbeads. I don't know if you, I've ever told you this before. But um, I do. So... I think they're very pretty and they're wonderful. They're very much like my um, three-year-old granddaughter. Well, she's two and a half. She's so stinking cute and adorable, but that girl is all over the place. Like, you can't keep track of them, right? They go everywhere. And it's probably from the static in my room. Yeah, just gotta get this out. So I picked another background piece. And I would say the micro beads work best with a fuller design than a very fine detailed one. The one I just picked is kind of in the middle. If I had time to find my brush script words, I was going to use that. I don't know where I put them. They're probably right in front of my face and I'm just not seeing them. So which Technique was your favorite so far, you guys. Which one do you think you're going to love the best? Now, I'm going to use micro beads. I did on this one, but you know the design is yellow. So be warned, if you use a light color micro bead, the yellow is going to pop through. I use this with the lavender um, or berry ones, so they're, they're like a purple. I like that. It looks like a mosaic design with the two colors. But if you're looking for solid cover, you're going to have to take like the copper or the silver microbeads. 
So just be warned on that because the yellow design is there to show you where the um, adhesive is. It does pop through on the lighter colors. And same as the glitter, I go in and press these babies down because I don't want them falling off. And I may have pressed way too much. <laughs> I probably didn't need to do that. This is a very full design. Wow, did those stick. You can still see a bit of the yellow in there. But it's kind of cool. Can you guys see that design okay? Okay, so here it is with the lavender and a, a kind of a wider design. This one was pretty fine. I would pick a fuller design like the brush or even like that where you get a defined line so you can see it. Okay, I'm not going to clean this up because I ran over a little bit, but I want to let you guys know Miranda is coming up next. Okay, and she has some amazing um, ideas for using relics and artifacts. So you saw a little bit today. Robbie is going to be her moderator, and I am going to be your hostess over on our other social media. If you are having trouble finding out what's going on for National Scrapbook Day, um, check our Facebook, check our blog. They should be there. The schedule should be there. Um, our blog, you may have to scroll down a little bit because we have multiple blog hops going on today and um, those may have bumped it down just a little bit. But they are there. The schedule is there. And we've been posting it all over our social media. So the shows today are every other hour. Um, so in at 1 o'clock, Miranda will be on and that's Eastern Time Zone. So in 45 minutes, okay, she'll be here and she'll have a whole new show. But Saunders' team from Relics and Artifacts has a ton of stuff going on. Like our pages on Facebook and you'll find out what's going on, okay? I just want to thank you guys for sticking with me. I was hoping to be done a little bit earlier. But um, thank you for joining us on Live with Prima. And I hope you guys had fun with the Christine Adolf ideas. I tell you, they can be used on anything. They're amazing, and they're very inexpensive for a whole sheet of rub-ons. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys, so much. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and you, if, if you didn't get to catch live, it will be up on our Ustream. Give it a half hour or so to upload, okay? All right. Happy National Scrapbook Day, guys. Bye-bye.